We saw the statistics done by researcher George Barner uh, indicating back in 2002 that around two-thirds of young people are going to leave the church. I mean, that, that's a shocking statistic. A recent New York Times article asks, why are so many people in their 20s taking so long to grow up? Kids are flocking out of the church. America is on the same track as the European Union. Whether you want to go at the alarming high of 88% or the biased low of 40%, it's a crisis and everybody knows it. Why are young adults leaving the church? More teens becoming fake Christians. We had some wrong thinking about youth work for a long time, a number of years, that fun and games and flashiness somehow brought transformation. We're realizing it really doesn't. Are we losing teens even before graduation? The issue of young adults dropping out of church has been a hot topic for several years, calling into question the long-term effectiveness of youth ministry. I ask myself if 80% of these kids are walking away from the faith and have in the 80s and the 90s. How many of my children do I want to see walk away and go to hell? Which four of my five children do I want to lose? We're losing about 40% of them by the end of middle school and another 45% by the end of high school. In other words, we're losing them way before college. 88% of the children raised in evangelical homes leave church at the age of 18, never to return. I don't need statistics to tell me that my generation is abandoning the faith. I've watched it happen with my own eyes. The sad reality is, it seems my generation as a whole has no respect for the church. They don't respect God's word and they don't want to grow up. I've got serious questions. What inspires kids to turn their backs on the church? And what gives them such contempt for Christian maturity and responsibility? Is it an issue with the church, the kids, the parents? Scripture says to train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. What part of this verse do we miss? As a filmmaker, I set out to find answers, and what I found out shocked me, and it saddened me. But I also discovered some hope, in what may seem like the most obvious place of all. My name is Philip LeClaire. This is my journey. I grew up in a church structured with programs. They went to Sunday school like most everybody else. Every Sunday was the same scramble for the family to get to church on time. I had some great Sunday school teachers and I learned a lot of things. But for the most part, it was more of a time for me to have fun and be with my friends. Afterward, we'd go through the regular church service and church would wrap up and we'd go home. That was basically church for me. Then I turned 13, which happened to be the age for me to graduate to our church's youth group. It was then that my dad really started paying attention to the teens coming out of the youth ministry. They had great programs for teens, the typical games and fun stuff. It's usually mixed with a Bible teaching of some sort. But something really concerned my dad about the teens he saw coming out of the ministry programs. Which left him asking, is this program designed to teach the teens in the church helping or harming them? For one of the first stops of my journey, I headed to one of the largest Christian gatherings of youth in the state, just held over an hour from my hometown of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. I'm here to talk to kids about their experience in youth group. You, uh, any of you interested in going on camera? Camera? What? What? Doing a, we're doing a film on youth ministry. On a scale from one to 10, how effective would you say your, your particular youth group was in, in terms of sharing the gospel and reaching the teens? For reaching the teens, I'd say uh, on a scale of one to 10, as far as that church, it would have been like a four. Eventually, my parents pulled me out of the youth program. Of course, I was disappointed. A lot of my friends were there, and at the time, I thought my parents were being unreasonable. But I went along, mostly because I didn't have much of a choice. What was it about your last youth pastor that brought him in? He was just a really cool guy. Uh, he could really relate to a lot of people because he was, he was younger. Uh, he was really hyper, and he was just a great teacher. I mean, he mentored you. I know a couple times he got me out of school just to go play a video game with them. Youth group every weekend, just get to hang out, talk to people, like you really get to relate to people about it. And yeah, like youth trips and missions and whatnot. To be honest, I think 
there's a time to get serious, but there's also a time to mess around. A lot of these kids, I've noticed, like in my youth group, they just go to church and go through the motions. They just clap along with the worship songs. They listen to the message. You know, it's more of a, a club for them. Just a bunch of us go to like Sunday school and hang out and talk and stuff. We just hang out, you know, uh, not, not hanging out at church, you know, but we'll hang out and then we'll go to church, you know, and do church things, but still have fun and bring youth in by doing fun things, you know, in the community and stuff. I guess you could say that not being part of the regular youth activities took a little getting used to. I mean, to me and my friends, youth group is church. And not being part of it was seen by some in the church as judgmental, or as if my family was abandoning the church. I don't think it was an easy decision for my dad to make. As I grew older, I saw something that saddened me. I watched as many of my own friends drift away from God. It didn't happen overnight. By the time they left home for college, many of them had actually walked away from the faith. Uh, I like to expose our kids to uh, the same st stuff and culture, like what our world is about today. A local Christian concert started to open my eyes. Kids are being told that the fun music of the world can bring them closer to God. It's nice to just, get, just to, get, to get exposed to other things as far as Christian culture. Yeah. Yeah. The concert was amazing. I've never felt this way before. And I'm, I, what I've known myself is to be a screw up, and I'm going to change that tonight. Um, it's probably one of the best that I've ever been yeah. to so far. This one was like off the charts. My back hurts, my mohawk's flat, and my voice is almost <laughs> gone. So and we have to shave our head again that, tomorrow. That means something right there. <laughs> I think we all know my generation needs to abandon the world and flee to Christ. But yet here, I see no distinction between worldliness and Christianity. It occurred to me, if the church is allowing worldliness in here and calling it Christian, how can I trust the church not allowing the brokenness of the world and elsewhere? and calling a Christian. I see an emphasis on music and entertainment, but no real emphasis on Bible teaching. And if, it, if the Bible is taught at all, it's usually for a very short time. What came as a sort of shock to me was that in the process of interviewing local teens, I found that almost every kid I spoke to rejected the belief of a young earth, as stated in Genesis. A young earth or an older? Hmm. A younger than older. Ah, it's a good question. It's obviously millions of years old. Billions of years old. I think we have an... Can there be a middle-aged earth? I would say, I would say probably about millions of years old. But it's definitely created in six days. Millions of years. The Bible is it's figurative language. It's not literal. I don't think the Bible cares to answer that question. That's one of the questions of this day. But you know what we tend to do in our churches, our Sunday school and with our kids? Oh, don't worry about that, uh, but trust in Jesus. To be stubborn and not answer that directly, my response is whether or not it was created literally in six days or across millions of years, Jesus still died on the cross for me. But see, we need to worry about that because that, that's a question if we can't answer. It shows the next generation that we, we just have this blind faith and we don't really believe this book and it's not real history anyway. Mature Christ followers disagree on this topic. Yeah. You know, like they're all Bible believing Christians, but you can disagree on this topic. You know, some believe it was made in six days and others believe, you know, in sort of uh, God directed evolution over, um, you know, millions of years. If you can't trust this part of the Bible here at the beginning and you're told, you can use man's ideas to reinterpret this. We don't have to take it as written. Or well, wait a minute, what about the rest of the Bible? Why are you telling me to take that as authoritative? In the process of co-authoring Already Gone, Ken Ham recently teamed up with statistician and market researcher Britt Beamer for a significant research project to find out why kids are leaving the church. I went to Orlando to meet with Mr. Beamer personally about his research. Welcome to the Beamers. Hey, Mr. Beamer. Good How you doing? Good. Come on in. Come on in. You know, what I look at as a company, you know, when you've interviewed you know, nine million consumers, we've done almost 2,000 different studies. I've probably studied every market in America as a, as a significant market. Did we lose these young people when they went to college? Because the, the premise has always been, well, when these kids are at home and they're under parental control, you know, they're, they're rock-solid Christian citizens. 
But when they get to college and they get un out of an uncontrolled environment into a totally uncontrolled environment, then they all of a sudden they say, boy, I can do what I want. And I was surprised by the fact that so many kids had fallen away even before they had gotten to college. But the shocker was is the number of people in, in middle school and, and in fifth and sixth grade in middle school was almost equal to high school. That was what was shocking to me. About 43% of them we lost in middle school and grade school, and 45% of them we lost in high school, and 10% when they got to college. 90% of people basically had so many doubts before they ever got to college, you could drive a semi-truck through it. What's happening to leave such huge doubts in the hearts of kids? Clearly, whatever we're missing is happening while they're still at home with their parents. And as the title of their book indicates, long before they even left the church, most of my generation was already gone. I heard about two youth pastors in Tacoma, Washington that I knew I had to interview. Carl DeArman and Jamie Davis have been on quite a journey of their own. So what's your experience in youth ministry? Where have you guys been? What have you done? I was the, the classic youth group kid. Uh, went to youth group growing up. Had a great relationship with my youth pastor. In a lot of respects, he was kind of a hero and, and a big influence in, in helping to push me towards doing uh, youth ministry. I met my wife because of, of youth ministry. It, my story was basically when I started going to Bible school after I got out of the military, I started asking some questions and I started seeing some of the results of the youth ministry and uh, youth uh, activity and asking, why aren't these kids not walking with Christ anymore? Why are they not um, glorifying God in their behavior? That's what frightens me so much about having done so many of these kinds of events where we have attracted the masses it's because I, I just don't know. Mm -hmm. And the end results, again, we put a lot of money into, into, into making these events um, with very little fruit to show for it. I mean, we had a good time and it was fun. I still go to bed that night wondering, what was that for? I mean, what, what did, with the exception of having smashed watermelons like Gallagher, what did we accomplish tonight? Author Brent McCracken, a self-described hipster, age 27, recently authored his first book about ups and downs of being hip in the church. You know, you're, you just wrote this book, Hipster Christianity, and it's getting a lot of press. What have you seen, you know, writing this book, what, what drove you to, to this conclusion? I think the role of hip in youth ministry has unfortunately been rather large in the last few decades and maybe going back to the 60s and 70s when youth ministry really started to develop and, and the, the youth culture at large and, and culture became this huge force. I think youth ministry doesn't necessarily have a lot of biblical like support in terms of specific verses that talk about like you shall create a youth group. I mean there's a lot of things in the Bible that aren't clearly spelled out. Ideally uh, the relaying of scripture and biblical knowledge from parent to child is something that should happen naturally. I, I think that would be preferable to having a, a youth pastor or someone else fill that role. But I think a lot of parents maybe don't feel equipped. They, they don't have Bible training. They've never been to seminary and maybe youth pastors have and they feel like you know those people are the experts and I want them to be the ones to really teach uh, my children. Is the point of youth pastors to cover for parents who don't feel equipped? And are youth pastors more qualified to train children than parents? I must say, that's a lot of trust to be placed on youth pastors. It seemed like a logical step to go straight into the gurus of modern youth ministry. So I traveled to Chicago for the youth ministry event of the year, hosted by Simply Youth Ministry and Group Magazine. 